Hi, this is an introduction on how to use Minitab to do randomization tests. Previous videos discussed why we should consider using the randomization test and how to conduct the randomization test by hand. Step-by-step -step instructions are included on the CD that came with your textbook and they're also freely available on the Pearson Practicing Statistics website. What we're going to talk about is Chapter 1, the Schistosomiasis example. Once Minitab is open, notice that there is a session window and a worksheet. And just paste the data. You can just say edit paste or control V to paste the data. Notice that if I paste the data here, a T shows up saying that this is a column with text in it. And if there's a column with text in it, Minitab can't treat that as numerics. We can't find the mean of this column because it's full of text. So I'm just going to delete those rows and just use our original data we're going to make one column. We're going to put all the female mice into one group. And you see the first thing we do is we say editor enable commands. So if we go into mini tab, see if I say editor enable commands it doesn't show up here. But if I click in the session window then if I say editor enable commands I can see it. So what I want to do is I want to say data stack and I want to stack two columns, and I wanted to stack column one and column two, and I would put it on the same worksheet, and I'm going to put it in column C5 and store subscripts in column C6. Let's go back and verify that's what the instructions say. So let's go back, hit OK, and you notice all that was done here is it took this column and this column, column one and column two, and put them into one column. So here we have one data set, and what we want to do now is we want to randomly assign five of them to the treatment group and five of them to the control group. But we want to use a randomization process to do that. So we do calc, random data, sample from columns. We're going to sample 10 rows from column C5, and we're going to put them in C7. And we do not want to sample with replacement. And so here we have a new randomization, just randomly assigning these original 10 into a new ordering. Here, now here are the five that correspond to the treatment group randomly assigned, and here are the five that correspond to the control group. So we want to find the mean and standard deviation of these. Data, unstack columns, we're going to unstack the data in C7 using the subscripts in C6. And after the last column in use, you see the 10, 16, 1, 7, 10, 10, 16, 1, 7, 10, that's the control and the treatment. And you notice here what the enable commands did is we can actually see that there's many tab programming that tells us what the program name is to code, to sample, sample 10 items from C C5 and put them into C7. We're unstacking them. So now we have the actual code so we can write our own computer program later on. That's going to be important in just a few minutes. We've unstacked them and now we're going to say let C10 be the mean of C8 minus the mean of C9. Just going to copy that code. And you can see that my first observed difference, the control group minus the treatment group, was 1.2. And as you saw in the videos, you know, 1.2 seems like a very reasonable answer. 7.6 is somewhat rare to get. Now, we don't want to do this entire process 10,000 times. It would certainly take a long time. So we're going to write a program that does this for us fairly quickly. So again, going back to the Minitab commands, here's a sample program that I'm going to put into Notepad. You see what it's going to do is it's going to sample the 10 columns from C5 and put them in C7. Then it's going to unstack them using the subscripts in C6. And we're going to still use those same names. And we're, it's going to calculate the mean of C8, the control group, minus the treatment group. Notice that this K1 is a counter. So K1 needs to be 1 the first time we run it. And then next time we run it, K1 is going to be in the second row. So let's just copy this code. And I'm going to open up Notepad. And so there's my code. And I'm going to save my code. File, save as. Make sure it says all types. And I'm going to save it in my GOA folder. 
you can call it anything as long as you remember what it is. I'm just going to call it schizome.mtb. Save. And now I'm going to run it as an executable file in Minitab. So I'm going to say file, other files, run an exec. Oh, first thing I have to do, sorry, we have to say let k1 equal 1. We have to define what k1 is. So what it is, that means k1 is the first row. When we do k1 plus 1, k1 will be the second row. And now we can say file, other files, run an exec, and I'm just going to run it five times so you can see what's happening. I'm going to go to select file, under desktop, then GOA, and there's schizome.mtb. You can see it ran it five times, and it went very quickly. But you can see that it randomly assigned these ten observations to the two groups and then calculated the mean five different times. Its program seems to be working okay. I'm going to run it now because we need to run it 10,000 times. I'm going to say file, other files, run an exec, and I'm going to do it 9,995 more times, so I have a total of 10,000 in this row. So this gets some MTB, and you can see that randomization process occurring here, that it's just, you know, it's randomly doing that assignment 10,000 times. So it takes maybe two to three minutes for Minitab to actually get all 10,000 iterations done. After running 10,000 iterations in this study, we simply want to count, was the difference between the two group means greater than 7.6? So this just simply counts. It puts a 1 if it was greater than 7.6 and a 0 if it was not greater than 7.6. So again, I'm going to copy this code, go into Minitab, and here we are pasting our code. So you see here there's a few cases where here's one case where we had a 7.6 if we go down. Anything greater than or equal to 7.6 will give us a 1. There's another one, another observed 7.6. So I'm just going to sum C11. Notice Minitab is not case sensitive, so you can do a capital C or lowercase c. It will read it as the same thing. I'm actually going to do a graph, graph and a histogram of C11. Oh, not C11. I'm going to do a graph and a histogram of C10 for observed responses. Now to me this isn't a great histogram. I'm going to change it so my cut point is exactly at 7.6. If I go into here, just double click on the x-axis, I can say binning, and I want cut points, and I'm going to select 0 0.95, and it'll ask me if it wants to extend, I'll say OK. And so here's 0 to 0.95, 0.95 to 1.9, but what that does is this bin right here starts exactly at 7.6. Another thing I can do is I can right click on here and I can say add reference lines. Whenever x is 7.6, there's my reference line. If I click once on the graph, I highlight all the bars, but if I click on one specific bar and now double click it, I can change the pattern or the color for these. And we have a very clear picture of what our p-value is. Out of 10,000 times, most of the cases were less than 7.6, but we had a few cases, 266 out of 10,000, where we observed a difference of 7.6 or greater. And one thing to be careful of, though, be really careful when you submit a graph. Make sure your labels look better than this. You can say histogram of schistosomiasis simulation study. And for C10, what C10 really is, is the female control mean minus the female treatment mean. So those labels are much easier to read. And it's also really easy. You can just right click this and you can say copy graph and paste it into any other type of document when you submit it for your homework.